This is the town of Gort in County Galway. It was the unlikely home to the biggest Brazilian community in Ireland. They came here during the good times of the Celtic Tiger. They worked hard, settled down and turned this small town in the west of Ireland into a little Brazil. But our boom went bust and many of them have returned to Brazil, bringing a small part of their adopted country with them. Brazil is a huge country. It's the fifth largest in the world, a melting pot of cultures, with a little extra green thrown in for good luck. In the small world, there are stories and experiences here that resonate all the way back home. Lucy Mary Trindade left Brazil 10 years ago to come and work in a meat factory in Gort. Her time here will soon be coming to an end and she's getting ready to return home for good. It's a happy time but at the same time it's sad. And what's waiting for you back in Brazil? My children, my mum, all my family. Like You haven't seen your kids in two years? Two it? years, yeah, two years. Very hard, very hard to speak to them on the phone and all and it's been very hard for me. Actually, I'm trying to bring everything. I don't like to leave nothing behind me. And like, I even bring on things that people are looking and say, what are you doing? Like, I said, it's mine. I got here, it's all I'm going to bring with me. I think when I look at them things in, in Brazil, you know, will be a piece of Ireland with me. So I, I decided to bring everything, so. metropolis in the world and home to 20 million Brazilians and a man from Skull in West Cork which is where our story begins. JBS is a food company and one of the largest exporters of beef in the world. Its investor relations officer is Cork-born Jerry O'Callaghan. Oh wow, look at this. Yeah, this is fun. It's like a proper 360 view of South Paulo. Yeah, this is where we um come in and out on the helicopter. This is our little helicopter. What is it here. with the helicopters? They're everywhere. If you drive around Sao Paulo, you'll discover why we've got a helicopter. You can spend hours and hours in the traffic. So, first of all, how did a man from West Cork end up in Sao Paulo? I left Ireland in the, in the mid-70s. At that time, there weren't many job opportunities. And I got to Brazil in 1979, and I, had, I have this sort of identity with Brazil. I think Ireland has an identity with Brazil. Because, I, you know, the way I see the Irish is they're very emotional, they're, they're very Latin, effectively. And, you know, most of the Irish people that come to Brazil, they fall in love with the place. So I'm one of many, huh? Jerry's love affair with Brazil is played out Monday to Friday in the city of Sao Paulo. But at the weekends, he travels to the heart of rural Brazil to spend time on his ranch with his extended family. He's invited me to get a taste of the country life and to find out how he helped the first Brazilians come to work in the Irish meat industry. Remember, Brazil has almost 200 million head of cattle and it slaughters what, about 40 million head of cattle per annum. And it's a very manual process. And so you would have a lot of skilled workers just because of the volume in Brazil. Mm, mm, mm. They like meat, they eat a lot of meat, therefore they have to know how to get the meat. Yeah, and particularly beef. Is that Portuguese for... It's, yeah, yeah, it's the same thing, yeah, it's a translation, it's a little translation. <laughs> we, we say boy, boy, which is a steer. Oh. Boy. <laughs> boy. There they are, the fine cattle. Huh? They're gorgeous. In the late 90s, a meat factory closed in the nearby city of Annapolis, leaving hundreds unemployed. Jerry knew that the Irish meat industry was crying out for skilled butchers, and he organised for some of the Brazilians to get new jobs in Ireland. It was kind of an opportunity to help the, these guys who were losing their jobs in, uh, in Brazil, and who were friends of mine. And at the same time, obviously, I was helping these, uh, these friends of mine who were in the Irish meat industry. So it was, it was kind of... Um, it had a dual purpose, and you know, we, we started getting work permits and getting these people over there kind of 
really fast because it, it, it fitted both communities' needs to have those people over there. Well, it was like wildfire. Within a week, there was 200 people uh, making applications to get a work permit, and within a month, there was 500. Because there were lots of people, it was a good opportunity. And they could send back to Brazil monthly amounts which were double the net salary they were making maybe in Brazil at that time. So it really moved the community, it really got the community going, particularly that region around the plant which is known as Villa Fabril. That area was really was transformed. And to this day, I mean, it's many years now, but to this day you can, you can see the really nice houses and you can say, well, that family was in Ireland. There's money from Ireland there, there's money from Ireland here, whatever. Does this satisfy the West Cork farmer in you, this place? Do you kind of go, oh, this is a bit of rural Ireland that I don't have anymore? This is probably one of my favourite places on the farm. Just, you know, dealing with cattle here and opening and closing these gates and weighing the cattle, this is what I like most. I feel like a cowboy. Well, a West Cork cowboy. <laughs> in Villa Fabril which shut down in the late 90s and put you know this whole community out of work so this factory reopened two and a half years ago which was kind of funny because back in Ireland that was when things started going bad for us so it was I suppose a get out of jail card for all the Brazilians who were working back in Ireland that they could come here and that there was an employer back in their hometown I think maybe 50% of Brazilians in Ireland were here now again yeah. you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so you were away for six years yeah. and never came home. Yeah. So is it kind of strange for you now that you're back? Jeez, yes, you know, especially because the, when I'm coming back, is, everything is different, you know? The only thing, same is language, like, all different. So same I say for you before, I wake in the morning, and I look and I say, I'm in Brazil. <laughs> Jeez, I go crazy sometimes, you know? But anyway, we have to stay here, and it's my place now. Yeah. You know, one Brazilian yesterday asked me, why you not go to, to, to Ireland again? I say, because I don't have work. Because if I have work, I go back. I like Ireland, you know. Good life and, you know, good people like me. This is Villa Fabril. It's a neighborhood just outside Annapolis, and it's where a lot of the Brazilians came from in the late 90s. Every second house here has a connection to Ireland, and it's also where Lucy Mary's three children live with their grandmother. Lucy Mary is returning from living in Gort in a couple of days, and I'm calling to meet her mother, Maria, to see if she's getting excited about Lucy Mary's homecoming. Hi! Are you Sabrine? <laughs> Prazer! Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Oi, to the bang. Oh, the bang. How are you? Oh, you're so like Lucy Mary. Yeah. <laughs> Oi, yeah. to the bang. Hi, my name is Gabriel. Hi, Gabriel. How are you? Good. And you must be Savio then. Yeah. To the bang. How are you? So this is where Lucy Mary's from. Maria is in the middle of building a new home partly funded by Lucy Mary's earnings from Ireland. So Lucy Mary is coming home soon. How do you feel about it after her being away for so long? Mais de dois anos que eu não a vejo e com muita saudade. De ela estar no meio da família, junto com os filhos, né? São Gabriel, Sabrina, Sávio. Vai ser muito bom a chegada dela. Muito bom. Ela aqui, os da Lucimeira, eu cuido deles, em Deus, que eles nasceram. Nunca, a Lucimeira toda a vida, né? Trabalha e eu que cuido em Deus de bebezinho. Praticamente meus filhos. <laughs> Novamente. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do they call you mom? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Over the years, Maria and the kids have lived on and off in Ireland with Lucy Mary. And although they haven't seen their mother in two years, they all have strong memories of Ireland. And was it hard to make friends when you came back to, to Brazil? No. No? Everybody was, were they interested that you were from Ireland? Yes. Did they know I where say that I, I say they born there. There's another um, 
kid that was from Ireland too. She know she know she's not she know how to speak English. Ah, okay. So you were having a chat with her when you arrived. And are you looking forward to your mom coming home? Well, I'm so happy that he's coming. She's coming. And what are you going to do at the airport when you see her? How to say? Como sabe? Como é que fala abraço em inglês? I give her a big hug. A big hug. I say she like that. And Savio, what are you looking forward to about your mom being home? Well, she's good. she's going to give us presents, and I, I'm happy. You're just thinking yeah. of the PlayStation games, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I just see her too. Good, good. I'm still, she'll be happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> Who are these guys? Hi. Hi. Tudbang. How are you? I'm, I'm good. You speak English very well. Thanks. <laughs> Did you live in Ireland? Yeah, I lived in Ireland for eight years. Eight years? Oh, to go away, yeah. Wow, no way. And how long are you back? Uh, seven months now. And what, what was the biggest shock for you coming back? What was the biggest difference? Leaving Atten Rai. You've been in Atten Rai, yeah? I really like that place. I, I grew up there, so... So do you, do you feel like you kind of have two homes? Yeah, I do, yeah. Your heart is in oh, two places. Definitely. Go back one day, I think. A new generation of Brazilian Irish can now identify strongly with both cultures. And for some, that's a bonus, but for others, it's a daily struggle. Leonardo Gomez moved to Gort with his family when he was just three. Two years ago, age 13, his family had to return to Brazil when his parents couldn't get work permits to stay in Ireland. So this is a little bit different to Skull Owen and Gort. Yeah, it's really different. What was your first day like? It was very hard. I didn't understand nothing they were saying. And I, I was lost and I knew no one in school. <laughs> was it terrifying? Yeah, it was. You hadn't kind of studied Portuguese in Ireland, is that why you were struggling? Yeah, it was, uh, my Portuguese was awful. <laughs> you just knew your parents' Portuguese, Yeah, it? just oh, okay. the, the basic things. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is my house. This is your new house? <laughs> yeah. That's a big telly. Yeah, it's quite big, isn't it? Did that come all the way from Ireland? Yeah, we shipped it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and look at this. Is this a dinky you used to play with when you were small? Oh, uh, we just bought it to remember the buses in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> are they, are, do they look exactly the same? That's hilarious. Is this your GA sporting career? Are you in here? Yeah, yeah. this was the... 2009 primary school champions. Yeah, we were champion. We Ben Lockray. No way! Yeah. This is your Hall of Fame, is it? Yeah. There's the, more than what's this the, one? The county final. County final. 2008. 2008. Yeah. Did you beat them? Yeah. Oh, well done. Look at you all, you're delighted with this fan especially, but do you look too? Look at Darren. <laughs> <laughs> Were you in touch with any of these lads still? Yeah, all of them. Now, I don't want to be putting a comparison on him to Sean O'Gohalbeen because I don't want to be putting pressure on the young lad, but I would seriously think and have no doubt that Leonardo would be good enough to wear a county jersey at some stage if he stays going the way he is going. That's pretty. Uh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I want to play for Galway. That's my dream. And I know I will someday. This is not really GA quality pitch you've got here to practice on. No, not at all. <laughs> so did everybody in the hurling teams have a cry when they, when you told them they were leaving? Well, some of them cried, yeah. <laughs> did you? I cried a lot. There's lots of people like that played hurling in Ireland that are living in Annapolis now. So if we join every, like everybody, we can make a team yeah, inside yeah. a GAA club. You only need 30? Yeah, 30. <laughs> Just find them. Just 30. <laughs> so how did you feel or what was it like when you came back two years ago? Uh, different because I, I didn't really, I didn't belong here. Well, I felt I didn't belong here. I was like, what am I doing here? And I was like, mom, I'm, can, when are we going back? Are you going to bring me back, mom? And uh, my dad said, yes, yeah, so we're going to bring you back. Don't worry. But then one day I was sad, the other day I was even sadder, more sadder. But that's it, yeah. So you just felt stranger? Yeah, I felt like a stranger here. Yeah, yeah I feel I feel I'm like 90% Irish and 10% Brazilian. <laughs> and do you think that might change over the years? No, I don't think so. No? No. I still don't want to go back, you know, because 
I, I like Brazil and all, but I, I, th I think I grew, I grew up in Ireland, so I think I belong to Ireland. I suppose it's the other side of the story when people migrate to a country temporarily and then when they bring their kids back, they've got their kids have this kind of identity crisis. Although Leonardo, he doesn't have an identity crisis. He thinks he's Irish. He feels Irish. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of tough on the poor fella. I, I feel for him. It's the day that Lucy Mary comes home after her 10-year adventure in Ireland. All her friends and family are coming to the airport to meet her, and I'm here to witness the big reunion. Just to see the children and they're all happy and, you know, see my mum. When you think that, you no, know, we can, you know, give a better life for them and, you know, maybe build something in Brazil and come back in a few years to Brazil and be able to work for myself and do, have a nice house and do things for my mum and for them, I think that's what keeps you going. It's very hard to do it, I tell you this, it's very hard. Is she actually getting very big since you saw her? Yeah, she is, yeah. Isn't she gorgeous? She's so cute. So, Maria, how do you feel? Could you ask her how does she feel? Feliz. Very, very happy. Yeah, you were the most emotional in the airport. I was this. I was the final race of the season, and Lightning McQueen was in the lead. It looked like he was about to become the first rookie to ever win the Pitstone Cup. There was just one problem. It was a photo finish and three-way tie. Ah, que lindo! Well done. They have to feel they have a mother again because you know, for the last few years they were with my mom and my mom is their mother. It's a bit strange because they don't feel me as a mother, like, and they know I am their mother, but they don't approach me to ask for things. And that feel you make you feel a bit sad, you know, because they lose the motherhood thing. They have to learn and know that I'm their mother. So I think. It's a bit hard. <laughs> Nossa senhora, mas que rapazão! O Bruno é o mais grande. Before, I just thought you have to work for somebody else for the rest of your life. And you never, you know, if you not work for someone, then you won't have anything. But now, in Ireland, they showed us that you can try and do something for yourself, that you are capable of build something for your own and work for yourself and do things like that. And I learn a lot in Ireland. I'm off to visit Marlene Gomez, who returned three years ago to her home place near Jaranopolis in the heart of the Brazilian countryside. For a lot of the Brazilians who went to Ireland, it was about being able to come home, buy a farm, buy some cattle, and, you know, come back to their roots, I suppose, a little bit. So this is where Marlene's farm is. She said there was four kilometers of bad road, so it's going to take a while, I'd say. Um, I thought it was going to be like an Irish style. <laughs> Sorry. I thought it was going to be woo, an Irish style bad road, but this is a Brazilian style bad road. Marlene? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, and you? Good, this is your home. Nice to meet yeah, you. How are yeah. you? <laughs> Marlene worked four jobs in Ireland and was able to save enough to return back to her roots and build her dream home on her father's farmland. I've arrived just in time for milking, and I'm going to give her a hand. Literally. I've never done this before. 
And you see, you, you need, you know, like this, you know. Look. Yeah. How comes you can do it much Nearly stronger? Nearly finished. Yeah. Come on, this one. Go for okay, it's only one. milk, it's only milk. Go for one hand. It's just so warm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the city, you know. <laughs> Go for a wash. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> hang on, hang on. You oh, tried and not a cow. No, no, I think I'm happy it's... now. That's good. Thank you, cow. I'm sorry I <laughs> molested you. <laughs> I think this one. This is of the black darn in Gorge. Did you work there? Yeah, for three years and nine months. My first job. And uh, in Ardraha, it's Jimmy Burks. So you just went and painted pictures of the yeah. place that you used to work? Yeah, and I don't paint Mother Hubbard. You work there as well? Yeah, it's my last job. Look what I just spotted, a Dunn Stores tag. Are you thinking <laughs> of returning these, are you? Or will I yeah. Do this I life is, for me is uh, good because I always I dream to come to live in here, you know. My dad just died when I was in Ireland. He's died, but I plan, I go, when I, I decide to go to Ireland, I tell him, and I go, and I get the money, and I, I come here again. But he's died, you know. But um, I'm very glad to, to know Ireland, mm -hmm. to work in Ireland, you know. <laughs> and are you getting emotional thinking about Ireland? <laughs> yeah, I miss Ireland. Why? I miss it. I don't <laughs> oh, don't get sad. But why do you miss Ireland? I miss uh, the life I had and uh, my friends, you know. Marlene has invited me to stay for Quadrilia, a traditional Brazilian night of religious celebration with a bit of dressing up and merriment thrown in. basically a celebration of St. John and it, the whole community had come together and done the rosary and some songs together and then they put up the, the um, ooh, and there's fireworks. <laughs> they don't have fireworks at the rosary in Ireland, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> I guess it's kind of like the Stations of the Cross, the Stations, but Brazilian style. Here, come here. Marlene's son, Junior, is keen to show me there is more than praying involved. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. It's very easy. And shake That's your easy. booty. Shake, shake your, your booty. booty. <laughs> 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 I didn't leave it for the dance floor. I'll do it properly in a minute. I'll practice my hip wiggling. Sit there, look at Oh yeah, I can do that. It's <laughs> very easy. To practice. Yeah. It's all about feeling it, isn't it? Yeah, if we had the music, I'd be way better at it. Go on, go on, go on. I gotta make my shoes. <laughs> I came here to find the people who called Ireland home for so long and what I found was that they came back, they built beautiful houses, they set their own businesses up and they generally lead a much more comfortable life than they did before they left. The downside of the good news is that they have a lingering hole in their heart for their adopted country and I suppose the difficult side of emigration is something that Irish people and Irish families can identify with. As a consequence of one man, Jerry from West Cork, 
you walk around this city and places like Villa Fabril and you bump into people who identify as strongly with Athen Rye and Loch Way as they do about Sao Paulo or Rio de Janeiro and it's kind of crazy and kind of wonderful. Next time on Small World, Kieran Murphy travels to the Middle East for the richest horse race in the world and discovers in Dubai a paradise literally built on sand. Still to come tonight with a display to rival Santa's own workshop. It's the Late Late Toy Show at 25 to 10. And a list of all the featured toys will be available on RT Airtel page 333. Next though, we're off to the newsroom.